COP27 and the Holocene Temperature Conundrum. This video will show how the Holocene Temperature Conundrum contradicts and invalidates the current climate model projections. The importance of this cannot be overemphasized. The Paris Agreement, Net Zero Targets and United Nations 2030 Agenda are based on the projections of climate models. For example, to predict possible climate futures for the IPCC 2021 report, the physical science basis, five scenarios were prepared based on a range of greenhouse gas concentrations and other factors. This set of scenarios were input to the climate models, which then projected future changes to the climate system. Based on these projections, the IPCC issued the warning that unless deep reductions in greenhouse gas emissions occur in the coming decades, global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius and 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels will be exceeded during the 21st century. But just how are the climate models validated? It is not possible to test them against the future until the future arrives. The IPCC validates the climate models by cross-checking them with proxy reconstructions of the past. Scientists thus evaluate the performance of climate models by comparing historical climate model simulations to observations, that is, proxy reconstructions. This process is best practice. It follows the scientific method outlined but by Richard Feynman. We compare it to experience to see if it works. In this case, we compare it, that's climate model simulations, to experience the proxy reconstructions to see if it works. If it disagrees with experience, it's wrong. That's all there is to it. We now arrive at the enormous issue facing COP27. The climate model projections do not agree with the proxy reconstructions of the late Holocene global average temperature anomalies. And importantly, this issue is very well known to climate scientists, but it remains unresolved. To explain further, we need to discuss at a high level how climate models work. The high level process starts with the selection of climate parameters that are believed to have existed at a particular time. Such parameters are, for example, greenhouse gas concentrations, ice sheet levels, and many more such parameters. A simulation of future climate states is carried out by inputting the climate parameters to the climate models. The climate models then produce a future climate projection. Different parameters produce different projections. And this is what the IPCC did when they produced five projections based on five different scenarios. To understand further, we need to define the scope of the period covered by the climate models. It begins towards the end of the last glacial period at the point of the last glacial maximum about 22,000 years ago. Parameters specifying the climate conditions at that time are input to the climate models and then the climate models produce projections of the future climate from that time up to nearly the present. Three simulations are shown here from the climate model CCSM3 L-O-V-E-C-L-I-M and F-A-M-O-U-S. They show global annual mean temperature increasing after the last glacial maximum and a further increase in global average temperature during the late Holocene from around 6,000 years ago. To follow the IPCC process of validation, we now need to compare these simulations with the proxy reconstructions of the Holocene. 
The Marcotte et al. study, Proxy Reconstructions of the Holocene, is well known and often cited by climate scientists, including the IPCC. This complex study was published in 2013. 73 globally distributed records were collected to reconstruct regional and global temperature anomalies for the past 11,300 years. The results are summarised. Early Holocene, 10,000 to 5,000 years ago, warmth is followed by approximately 0.7 degrees Celsius cooling through the middle to late Holocene, that's less than 5,000 years ago, culminating in the coolest temperatures of the Holocene during the Little Ice Age, about 200 years ago. This chart displays that result. Following the last glacial maximum, global temperature increased, followed by a period of warmth, and then global average temperature fell during the late Holocene, until the Little Ice Age of 1450 to 1850. But this late Holocene fall in global temperature is not reflected in the projections of the climate models. Instead, they project an increase in global average temperature during the late Holocene. The climate model simulations thus disagree with the proxy reconstructions. Therefore, they are wrong. So, how did climate scientists react to this issue? The seriousness of the issue was immediately apparent and was termed the Holocene temperature conundrum. The term was coined by this study in 2014 by Leo et al. The study explained that a recent temperature reconstruction by Marcotte et al. of global annual temperature shows early Holocene warmth followed by a cooling trend through the middle to late Holocene, as we have seen. The study goes on to say, This global cooling is puzzling because it is opposite from the expected and simulated global warming trend due to the retreat in ice sheets and rising atmospheric greenhouse gases. It explains that the study analysed three climate models, which were the same three models we referred to earlier. And, as we saw, the three models all simulate a robust annual mean warming of approximately 0.5 degrees Celsius throughout the Holocene. The LEO study does not go so far as to say that the models are therefore wrong, but does say that if the market study is correct, then it will imply major biases across the current generation of climate models. It follows up by concluding to provide a credible benchmark for future climate models, the proxy reconstructions will also need to be re-examined critically. So the issue could be resolved if, in fact, the market study is wrong. As a result, much work has been carried out by climate scientists to determine whether the market study is wrong or whether the climate model projections are wrong. To determine whether the market study is wrong, a new study was carried out to arrive at another version of Holocene global average temperature anomalies. The study by Kaufman et al. was published in 2020. The results would be compared with the market study of 2013. This new study built a database that is the most comprehensive global compilation of previously published Holocene proxy temperature time series currently available. This is the result. Like Marcotte, global mean temperature rises after the last glacial maximum. There is a mid-Holocene warm period, like that of Marcotte. And again, like Marcotte, there is a gradual drop 
in global temperature during the late Holocene. The Kaufman study also presents this diagram that shows three merged reconstructions, Kaufman, Marcotte and Chacun, all showed the Holocene temperature conundrum, where the drop in global average temperature during the late Holocene contradicts the climate model projections. The case against the climate model projections is very strong, but a very new study carries out further simulations. This study by Chihan et al. was published February 2022. The study presents the design of a new set of transient experiments for the Holocene from 11.5 thousand years ago to the pre-industrial period, 1850. The climate model used to run the simulation in this study is CESM 1.2.1. CESM is a fully coupled global Earth system model that provides state-of-the-art simulations of the Earth's past, present and future climate states. This chart shows the results of the study. Again, it shows the Holocene temperature conundrum where from around 6,000 years ago, during the late Holocene, the climate model projection shows global temperature increasing. The study summarizes that the late Holocene warming trend simulated by CESM 1.2.1 in its all-forcing simulation is consistent with that in the three transient simulations as shown in Leo et al. 2014. But inconsistent with the reconstructed cooling trend in Marcot et al. and Kaufman et al. To conclude, the latest modeling exercises and proxy reconstructions confirm that climate model projections still do not match the very latest proxy reconstructions of the late Holocene global average temperature. There must therefore be a high level of doubt about the accuracy of such statements as this from the IPCC 2021 report. When such statements and the Paris Agreement and net zero targets and the United Nations 2030 agenda are based on the unproven and hence very doubtful projections of climate models. All of which makes it inexplicable why Antonio Guterres has stated that the evidence is irrefutable. The evidence in this video, all based on the work of climate scientists, contradicts such a misguided statement. Instead, the common sense recommendation is that given the doubt that exists around the accuracy of the climate model projections, the implementation of the Paris Agreement net zero and the United Nations 2030 agenda should be urgently re-evaluated and current socially disruptive measures should be paused. Our community combines the topics of globalism, nationalism, climate change, health and the new world order. If you would like to join our community, you can find us on locals.com slash discover. Just enter the new world order. This link will take you directly to our site.